This is Apple's Smart Keyboard Folio for the second generation 11 inch iPad Pro and it retails for $179. A larger 12.9 is also available for the Folio keyboard and it sells for $199. Inside the box we get the Folio keyboard itself, some document paper, and that's disappointingly it. The keyboard comes available in every single color as long as it's black. Well, it's not really exactly black. It does have an off gray color, but this is really the only color available, unfortunately. And here it is. It simply just attaches to the iPad Pro with a smart connector on the bottom and it just magnetically attaches like so. Which is great because there's really no need to go into the Bluetooth setting on your iPad, nor do you have to worry about charging the keyboard. Everything just automatically connects and being a first party, it gets this cool back Apple logo engraving right here. When you have it on a flat surface, it has two sitting positions. You can, in theory, have it sideways like so, but it's not intentionally designed for this. And of course, I guess you could and put it down flat, laying it rest on the keys like this. The magnets that do hold the iPad in place, preventing it from accidentally shaking off or detaching, are really strong and durable so the iPad doesn't come apart as easy. The keyboard itself, I mean, it flex, but it's not flimsy. So no, you can't really easily bend this if you sit on it or something. And there's like no cracks nor a riddle of any plastic moving inside it. And to fold it flat, it is a two-hand operation as one needs to hold the case and then just place it down like so. But there's also this table method I've seen others do where you could just like snap it out and fold it single-handedly as well. But bringing it back up does require a two-hand operation. Now, originally, if you watched my previous video, I wasn't gonna buy this keyboard. I was gonna use this money towards the new Magic keyboard, but I felt like in order for me to actually give this iPad a proper review, I feel that I at least had to try this keyboard first. And after a few days with this keyboard folio case, these were my thoughts. I like the texture, the feel of this smart keyboard. The exterior has like this silicone-like feel, but not too grippy that's really annoying and will collect lint. The keyboard itself, the material that covers the keyboard, it's separate from that silicone material and actually has like a nylon cover over the keyboard. So in a way, this keyboard does have some type of water and dust resistance because there's no exposure to the mechanical parts inside the keyboard. And this fabric also allows the fingertips to have additional grip when you're typing. They do make this clicking noise, which some people love and some people hate. I like it. It's not really as notches and it sounds like this. And that's me trying to make the noise, but when I'm just generally using it, a keystroke sounds like that. But a thing I don't like about this case so much is I'm not a huge fan how the edges are exposed because it's really only the top part and the bottom part to actually have some type of protection, but not the edges. So in case an accident happened, like you leave this on the side of an edge or something and someone just does that, if the iPad falls on a hard surface, it's very likely it's gonna impact one of the corners and leave a nasty dent. And even though this case does attach to the iPad with really strong magnets, a high impact I'm pretty sure will cause the iPad to come off easily from the case if it does suffer like a hard fall. So if you have a history of dropping expensive devices like laptops around this size, I will personally recommend looking towards the Logitech keyboards instead because they at least offer edge protection. It's what I would originally recommend, but after doing some digging, I found there's an accessory that actually will give the official Apple Smart Folio keyboard edge protection. This accessory is by iBlazon, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Feel free to correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong, but this company actually will allow your smart folio case to actually have edge protection and also has a nice cubby right here where you can actually put your Apple Pencil so it doesn't easily fall off in case you bump into a wall or it makes sure that the Apple Pencil stays in place. Now they currently, from what I've seen, they don't have that accessory available yet for the 2020 new generation iPad Pros, but I'm thinking about grabbing one of those and just use a drill bit and make an outline over the camera and just jerry-rigging everything to make it work. So if you do plan on picking up that accessory and want to also give that a shot, I'm gonna make sure to leave it in the link in the video description down below and stay tuned for that video. But the benefits there is having open ports like this is that since there's no plastic or anything on the bottom right here, 
you could take one of these very handy USB hubs and attach it like so without having to remove the iPad from the case. If you're wondering what USB hub that is, I'll have it in the video description, or you could click on that video right there if you wanna see more detail of it. Now, this case itself, although it's really flat, it's hard to tell that it even has an internal battery. Based from the information I was able to gather, I looked at iFixit previous teardown video of the previous generation of the Smartfolio keyboard, and that one didn't have an internal battery, so I'm assuming this one doesn't either. So I can't really confirm if it does have an internal battery, but what I can say, it's really energy efficient. With this case on using the keyboard, it doesn't really draw a lot of energy because I didn't really notice a difference if I'm actually using the case or not. Since there's no backlit, yes, you heard me right, the keyboards do not illuminate. So when you're typing at night, you have to utilize the screen brightness to see where your keys are. But because of that, it's probably one of the reasons why it doesn't draw a lot of battery. But yes, I'm still disappointed that it doesn't operate backlit. The Magic Keyboard is gonna operate backlit, but according to some journalists that, that actually got some interviews with some people from Apple, they said that that USB port that you see on the side is to charge the Magic Keyboard. So that's probably the reason why this one doesn't have that because it doesn't have an internal battery. But we'll know more once that Magic Keyboard gets released in a few more days and stay tuned for that comparison video between these two. But since it does draw energy from the iPad itself, that means there's no need to carry additional cables around with you. So the thing I noticed between the second generation and the first generation, based from images I've seen online, the people comparing the two, the edges seem to be much improved as this new edge. I don't know if you can see this, but it looks to be more durable. And the new 2020 second generation also has a darker gray to it. That makes it seem like it is black. Now the camera cutout that goes around the new camera housing is a perfect one-to-one -one edge as it still is challenging to tell if this is a silver or a space gray. So it doesn't expose a lot of the silver or the space gray color for making it stand out a lot. But if you wanna take a picture with the iPad, you are gonna have to hold the iPad like so just to make sure the keyboard doesn't like cover the camera. So if you do want to take a video or a photo, you poor soul, you're going to have to hold it like this. So basically this is how you're going to look like if you're at a zoo. It's like you're holding two iPads side by side just to take a photo or a video. Other critical things to also mention just to clarify some questions is when you have your iPad photo like so, the keyboard is deactivated. So even if you accidentally press a key back here, it's not gonna type anything on this display. The keyboard only turns on as soon as the magnets or whatever sensors are right here on these little engravings right here. It uses like a magnetic pull or something like that to turn on the keyboard. And then when performing the leg tests, I mean, when I have it rested on my lap, the keyboard itself is really sturdy in these type of situations. I could type endlessly without having any issues. And then since the iPad doesn't heat up like a traditional laptop, I'm not gonna face any discomfort if my thigh is feeling like they're about to catch on fire. So all in all, I mean, I really do like this uh, folio keyboard. It's minimum. When it's folded down, it doesn't even look like you have a case on it. I do still wish there was some kind of edge protection, like some type of bumper. And then again, for its price, I wish there was a backlit option, like a switch to enable it either inside the OS, since this is a first party, kind of like AirPods, you're able to toggle transparency mode or noise cancellation. That would've been cool if there was an inside OS feature for something like that. And, and since it doesn't rely on the Bluetooth connection, you could turn off your Bluetooth connectivity or have it on airplay mode and the keyboard will work perfectly fine. But for almost $200, it's honestly hard to recommend this smart folio keyboard for everyone. Because I, yes, I would consider this to be an essential accessory, especially if all you do or plan on using this iPad for is typing or taking notes for class or for work. Because I'd rather be taking this when I'm traveling than a 16 inch Mac. If all I have to do is just type up a few things. But again, because it's price tag, it's really challenging for me to recommend this for everyone. Oh, and before I forget to mention, in case you're curious, yes, believe it or not, this keyboard case is also compatible with the 2018 model. So if you own that generation iPad Pro, you'll be glad to know that you can still use it even on the latest second generation or fourth generation, depending on which one you go for, smart folio case. You're just gonna be left with an awkward uh, camera opening in the back here. If you're on a budget because the iPad itself isn't cheap, I would really consider picking up like a reliable third party one like, like the Logitech cases that they have available for the iPad with that keyboard. But they are slightly bulkier compared to this. So if you want that super slim keyboard case, yeah, the 
Apple Smart Keyboard, it's gonna be a good choice. Guys, if you're wondering what kind of accessories I have on my iPad Pro, you can go ahead and watch this video over here because I pretty much go through all the detail in that video. And then this video over here, that's a video that YouTube thinks that you will like. Feel free to watch either or. Again, stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.